our prototype alkene is a compound called ethylene, which has the following structure. Important things to notice about this particular compound are that because of the double bond, we don't have free rotation as we would with a single bond. So therefore, the relative positions of all the atoms are locked into place. And the overall molecule turns out to be planar. So it will be all the six atoms are entirely in the plane of the whiteboard. So now we want to try to uh, classify this molecule as far as its point group symmetry. So a common technique is to look and look for rotations that will rotate in the plane of the board. And we often like to look for a high order rotation axis that's perpendicular to it. And a point where we might look for an axis to intersect the board would be right here. Now, if we just naively look at the molecule, we would notice that there are four identical substituents to the central carbon pair. So we might assume that this particular molecule would have a C4 rotation. So you might think, oh, I see four identical substituents. I often may jump to the conclusion that it would have a C4 rotation. But let's look and see what happens if we actually try to do a C4 on this. Well, if we do a C4, we end up getting a situation where we have two hydrogen atoms up here two hydrogen atoms down here. But then we notice that this pair of carbon atoms goes from being horizontal to vertical. So this would be the conformation of our ethylene molecule after a C4. And since we, it's quite clear that it looks different than it did before, that C4 is not a symmetry operation of this particular molecule. So does it have any interesting high order rotation axes? Yes, it does. Well, if we rotate by 180 degrees, the effect of this rotation would be to swap the two carbon atoms. This hydrogen atom here would go over there. This hydrogen would go to there. So uh, this particular molecule does have the C2 rotation. And it's a rotation in the plane of the board. Does it have any other C2s? Well, one C2 we might look for would be along the x-axis. If we draw the x-axis this way, let's call this x. And we notice that if we try to do a C2 rotation here, it would take this hydrogen to that hydrogen, this hydrogen to that hydrogen. The two upper hydrogens would be swapped with the lower hydrogens. And since the two carbon atoms are along the axis, they're not affected by the rotation. So we do have a C2. And we notice that this C2 is perpendicular to our high order rotation axis. So that tells us right away that there has to at least be another C2, and there is. So we might have found this one first. We're looking along the y axis. That we also have a C2. And this would take hydrogen into hydrogen, hydrogen into hydrogen, and would swap the two carbon atoms. So we have two C2s that are perpendicular to our high order rotation axis, which tells us immediately that we have some kind of D2 symmetry. So at least so far, we know it has to be a D group because we have two C2s that are perpendicular to the C2 high order rotation axis. So now we want to look for mirrors. And we're aided immensely by using the class of compounds of ethylenes because we know that ethylenes at least for the base compound and the simple substitutions, are all going to be planar. Since they're planar, they're going to have a mirror plane in the plane of the board, and this particular mirror plane happens to be normal to our high order rotation axis. Therefore, I have a D2H group. Now notice this molecule has numerous mirrors. It also has mirrors in the XZ plane. It has mirrors in the YZ plane, and if we were to have selected a different C2 as our high order rotation axis, it would not have changed our point group assignment. 
Now, let's examine some substituted ethylenes to assess their point group symmetry. The simplest substitution that we might make will be to replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a halogen. <coughs> so this gives us chloroethylene. And again, we want to look for the high order rotation axis. We might look for something through along this axis. And we notice that if we try a rotation in this way, it would take chlorine into hydrogen, which are distinct elements, so we do not have a C2. Another thing to notice is that whenever we replace a hydrogen with a chlorine, for example, not only have we changed the identity at this particular position, which affects the symmetry, but one thing which we haven't looked at in detail, it's going to change the actual bond length. So um, in addition to having a different element here, the element would be in a slightly different position than it would have been in the case of a hydrogen atom, for example. So we no longer have a C2 in the plane of the board. So let's look for a C2 along the x-axis. That would be along here. Well, this would flip hydrogen to hydrogen, which is okay, but it would interconvert chlorine and hydrogen, which are not the same. So we no longer have a C2 along the x-axis. We can look for our C2 that we had along the y-axis. That would swap hydrogen and hydrogen, which would work, but would also try to interchange hydrogen and chlorine, which doesn't. So we've eliminated all three of the C2s that we had found in our previous ethylene compound. So that tells us that we don't have any C2s. The highest order rotation axis we're going to have is a C1. So now we want to look for mirrors. Again, if we look for along the XZ plane, this mirror doesn't work because it would reflect chlorine into hydrogen. YZ would not work because it would reflect hydrogen to chlorine. The only mirror plane that we're left with is in the plane of the board. So since we only have the identity and a mirror plane that tells us that this particular molecule has the point group symmetry of CS. So let's elaborate a little bit more here. And now we want to dye substitute. So we want to have a dye substitute ethylene with chlorine. So one of the ways that we could do this would be to replace this particular hydrogen with chlorine. So this gives us the 1,1 one, one dichloroethylene. And we would like to assess the point group symmetry of this particular molecule. For the reasons which we had already noted for the monosubstituted chloroethylene, if we look for a rotation axis along here, it would take chlorine into hydrogen, which doesn't work. So we don't have anything more than a C1 through the x-axis. How about this one? Let's look at the y-axis. Well, a C2 around the y-axis would take chlorine into hydrogen, which doesn't work. But we are fortunate that we do have along the x-axis I do have a C2 here, and this particular C2 is going to interchange chlorine and chlorine, which works. It's going to interchange hydrogen and hydrogen. So we do have a C2, and that's going to be our high order rotation axis for the entire molecule. Do we have any other symmetry elements? We notice that we do have a mirror along the XZ plane it reflects the top half into the bottom half of the molecule. And we also have a mirror plane in the plane of the board. We notice that we have a C2, the identity, and two mirror planes. So that tells us that for 1,1 one, one dichloroethylene, the point group symmetry is going to be C2V. There are two more di-substituted uh, chloroethylenes. So let's look at those. Um, the next combination we're going to look at is chlorine here and then chlorine here. And then 
The remaining positions are still with the hydrogen atoms. So what are we going to call this particular isomer? Well, we have chlorine at the 1 position and the 2 position, or 1 and 2, it doesn't matter. We always want to name it so that we have the smallest numbering. So we have 1, 2 dichloroethylene. Well, we can even name it more than that because we have a specific situation where both of the chloro substituents are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So that tells us that we have the cis isomer here. So this is the cis 1,2-dichloroethylene isomer. Okay. So now <clears throat> we want, want to look for the high order rotation axis. If we try and rotation in the plane of the board, that would take chlorine into hydrogen, which does not work. Uh, we might try along the x-axis for an axis of rotation, but that would interchange chlorine and hydrogen, which doesn't work. But we do have, in this case, a high order rotation axis along the y-axis. We do have a C2 here, and this C2 will interchange chlorine and chlorine, carbon and carbon, hydrogen and hydrogen, so we really do have a C2 along the y-axis. Our next order of business, that's the only C2. Uh, there are no C2s that are perpendicular to it, so we definitely do not have any sort of a D group. We want to look for mirror planes. Well, if I look for a mirror plane XZ, that would reflect chlorine into hydrogen, which doesn't work. But if I do go along the YZ plane, it does reflect the left half of the molecule into the right half. So that is one mirror. And again, this is a planar molecule, so we have a mirror plane in the plane of the board. So again, this gives us an example of the point group C to D. We have one final substitution, uh, substitution pattern that we can investigate with two chlorine atoms. So let's reset our molecule here. And we can draw it. But now we're going to put the second chlorine here. So now we have a new isomer. Again, we have a chlorine at the one carbon and a chlorine at the two carbon. So it is again a one, two dichloro ethylene. But now these two chlorines are on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. So that makes this the trans isomer. This is the trans 1,2-dichloroethylene. Again, we're going to do our trick of looking for a rotation in the plane of the board, at least first, and it would go through this particular point. And we do notice that in this case, it exists because it would rotate chlorine into chlorine, hydrogen into hydrogen. So we do have a C2 rotational axis in the XY plane. So we do have a C2. Do we have any other symmetry operations? Well, if we look for other C2 axes, we might look along the x-axis. That ah, doesn't work. Along the y-axis, it doesn't work either. So the only, if we try along this, we might try along here. Um, and the problem would be that it, the rotation would take this carbon to the other side. There isn't a carbon there. Same thing with this carbon. The fact that we have a two atoms bound together messes up what might have been a C2 sort of along the diagonal. Also, it would take a hydrogen here to a hydrogen there, and there is none. Such. So we don't have any C2 along there. We have a mirror plane in the plane of the board. So, so far, we have three symmetry operations. We have the identity, we have a mirror plane, and we have a C2. But we have one last symmetry operation. Well, the, the mirror plane in the plane of the board, just notice something, is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. So that makes it a horizontal mirror. So since we have a C2 and a horizontal mirror, that tells us that we have the point group C2H. This point group also has one other important symmetry operation, 
which is not essential for the naming of the compound, uh, the naming for the point group family, but it is crucial to, to its properties. And that is the um, inversion. We notice that if we draw a vector from the center to one of the substituents, and then we go in the exact opposite direction, we reach an identical substituent. If I go to a hydrogen, and I go exactly the same distance in the opposite direction, again, I reach hydrogen. And this would work also for the carbon atoms themselves. Since I have this property, it tells me that the additional symmetry operation that we find in trans 1,2 dichloroethylene is inversion. So we can easily distinguish the cis 1,2 dichloroethylene from the trans 1,2 dichloroethylene by using vibrational spectroscopy. We would run both samples in both Raman and infrared. And we would notice that for the trans isomer, because it is centrosymmetric, that the bands in Raman and the bands in infrared would not line up at all. Whereas for the cis isomer, some of the bands would overlap. And that is our definitive test for ascertaining which molecules have the property of being centrosymmetric. Next, we might try a tri-substituted ethylene. So let's replace three of the hydrogen atoms with a halogen and attempt to assess its point group symmetry. Now, the key feature here is not that we have three substituents. It's that these three are identical and we have one that is different. So we would achieve the same results uh, from, the point view, from the point of view of point group symmetry, if not from chemistry, if we were to replace it with the following molecule. However, just to swap the hydrogens and the chlorines, I get identical point group symmetry. So in both the cases, we would see that we would get a point group symmetry of CS. And then just to continue that idea completely, let's per substitute the ethylene. So have per chloroethylene, we replaced all the hydrogens with chlorine. So again, we're back to the situation where we have a high order rotation axis of a C2 in the plane of the board. We also have the C2s that go along the Y axis And along the x-axis and we have a mirror plane that is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis so what we see is that even though they're chemically distinct ethylene and perchloroethylene both have the d2h point group symmetry